Praise you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 12 today, Bible study for our crew of street preachers. Amber is uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, let me make sure I say the state right. We're here in Southern California. Me, Jason, Kimberly, others that come out street preach with us. Praise the Lord. Thank you guys for prayer yesterday to go out to that place that does um, drugs to kids without prescriptions. Praise you, Lord. Glory be to God in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus can break every addiction, he can set the captives free. You just got to have faith and obedience. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to you, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. Glory be to you, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Real quick testimony. Thanks for everybody for praying yesterday after I stood in front of that acupuncture place that sells drugs to kids even without a prescription. So it says on internet. I don't know if they actually make you go get a prescription. They might use it for internet rankings. I know about these things. Um, so they might make people get prescriptions, but you can get prescriptions for any drug you want. All you have to do is Google search how to get it. And that's just what the kids, I mean, it's just the prevalent 100,000 people died of drug overdose, more than COVID, more than cancer, more than car accidents, all combined in one year. So um, we went out there, we've been praying, we went out there and rebuked it and the Lord gave us favor. But after that, we went out to the very corner and just held signs and started listening to worship music and praising God. And right before we were about to leave, a woman pulls up and she stops and it wasn't, I don't think it was a prophetic word that get, the Lord gave me. I just was in the spirit. And I said, somebody's going to come for prayer. And she ended up pulling right into the gas station and I made sure she could see me. And lo and behold, she walked right up and a black lady named Kim. And uh, so we prayed for her and uh, her husband was cheating on her. And so we prayed for her and she confessed and um, we tried to get her to come out street preaching with us. We gave her our name. We started praying over her and she felt the Holy Ghost and she smelled a little bit of alcohol and she thought I had a prophetic word telling her to stop drinking, but it was just because I smelled it on her a little bit. And I just told her, you're going through pain. And so you're going to the wrong places. So just go to the Lord and consecrate your heart to him and get out and do the will of God. Cause this lady had brightness on her and, uh, so before I went to bed last night, I started weeping because I saw her face again and she was wearing makeup and, and she see the brightness of God on her, but she's hurting. And, she, and if a man's sleeping around on a wife, it hurts so bad that they try to make, you know, she tried to make herself look really pretty and she's going through a lot of pain. And we saw the man, the man was there trying to pull her away and he was hardened. We had a dark, dark. So pray for Kim. Pray that maybe she connects with us and goes out and street preaches because that's where you're going to get your healing. Just consecrate your heart completely to the Lord God and do the will of God. And that's what we told her and prayed over. And so the gospel is this God sent his only begotten son. He left glory. He walked among us. He dwelt among us. He was born poor, born in a manger, fulfills all prophecy. And he walked, he never sinned. And he paid the price, the ultimate price. Everybody rejected him. He, he was called. Uh, a man of sorrows, um, we esteemed him not in Isaiah, and they spit on his face, they punched him, they yelled, they pulled out his beard and said, and, and said, prophesy to us now, covered his face, punched him and said, who hit you? And they nailed him to a cross. And this is to fulfill all prophecy. It's God making the way for us to get in right standing with him for our sins. And so he resurrected on the third day. And if you believe that, and you confess that, that you want him to be your Lord. And you believe with all your heart that God raised him from the dead. That it says you shall be saved. Um, we're rebuking once saved, always saved, because it's a man-made doctrine. And there's three types of being saved. The initial tense of the word, saved by belief. But then there's also the tense of the word being saved unto sanctification, which is ongoing. That's why we get scriptures that say, um, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's why we get scriptures that say, uh, I've called you to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God. 
through Jesus Christ for the remission of sins to those who are sanctified unto an inheritance. So it's a process. So sanctification is regeneration where the Holy Spirit's in you and it's regen you're being regenerated and being made more holy. And so there is a reverse sanctification called degeneration. So if you go away from the Lord and you start going into strange doctrines or you just become a drug user and you become reprobate, you're going, you're being degenerated and um, you can either go straight to hell because how else do we understand Matthew seven, where he, Jesus is saying many are going to say on that day. And these people are claiming a lot of work, you know, and he says to this group, depart from me. I never knew you, ye that work iniquity, meaning lawlessness Not born again, or born again and going toward reprobation and thinking they're okay to just go on and sin. And Jude tells us in one chapter, certain men have crept in unaware, taking the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and turning it into lasciviousness which is lawlessness. So, you know, we don't preach, we don't preach the wide path. We preach the narrow path that Jesus preached, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow him. And he says, if you're unwilling to do these things, you're unworthy to be called his disciple. He tells us there's many ways that you could stumble. Your family could cause you to stumble your job and your property. Amazing that that's what it's coming down to right now with the fourth sorcery shot. A lot of families are divided and this is, this is, prophecy this is scripture and so jesus tells us you know and jesus warned about hell so that's another thing is like if you're not if you don't believe that there is a hell then you don't believe in the real jesus because jesus warned about it so so should we and he warned severely about it um through parables and all of these things and so i thank you guys for praying we also are praying uh, with oil over over napkins and taking them out with us when we street preach and praying a lot over when we're praying we're praying with our prayer cloth and we've seen a lot of moves of the holy spirit um devils cast out spirits cast out we're striving um for more spiritual gifts because it says covet the spiritual gifts uh amber has prophetic words kimberly was given a lot of insight onto sin and prophetic words and her calling and so god speaks and that's how he saved me through speaking to me through putting his spirit in me. And so that's called word of wisdom or word of knowledge. Um, there's extra faith as a gift, healings, miracles, discerner of spirits, which is seeing in the spiritual, which is understanding the spiritual conflict before it comes sometimes, which is having insight into the spiritual and uh, speaking in unknown language, understanding unknown languages. These are gifts that are promised to believers. Jesus said, these signs shall follow believers. They will heal the sick cast out devils, speak in new tongues. There's many other things that believers do. Um, praise you, Lord God, that are part of the nine spiritual gifts I just mentioned. And that, that's the supernatural um, thing that follows believers. It's a spirit, the spirit of God dwells in us and he works through us. And it's on his timing that he does everything. We can't treat him like a genie in a bottle, like some of the people that drag down his name by trying to force prophecy and trying to call people into gifts that the Lord hasn't called them into. So it's the Lord God that gives the gifts. It's not, I don't get to say, Hey, you're going to be a prophet, which is what a lot of the people are trying to do out there in the, in the NAR and the false prophetic arms. And that's not how it works. It's God's gifts are without repentance. So he gives them as he wills to give them. Praise you, Lord. So he, Amber's going to read Hebrews 12. We'll break it down. And then she's going to read Re revelation one. Okay. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and then run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth 
if ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons? Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them a reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our prophet that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Praise God. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and temptus. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard and treated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so, much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are not come unto Mount Zion and to the, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, hmm. whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, Yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. fire. Jesus. Praise you, Lord. So Jesus didn't preach once saved, always saved. He said, count the cost to be my disciple all the way to the end in Luke 14. John 15, he said, if you abide in me, which means to abide in Jesus, you will bear much fruit. But apart from him, you can do nothing. And he's giving us an example of a branch that becomes dead and gets cut off and thrown into the fire. So yeah. you go open up the scriptures and you decide what that means for yourself. But Jesus explains it many times that you we want to endure to the end look at matthew 24 he's telling us to endure to the end he says those who endure to the end shall be saved luke 21 pray you're found worthy to escape the judgment that's going to come try the whole world and to be able to stand in front of the son of man first peter 4 about the house of the lord judge first and if scarcely a believer be saved what about the ungodly so Jesus, you know, he told us how to, how to do it. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow him, seek him, cry out to him. And he, with the Holy Spirit, he will give you the power to overcome. That's why he tells us in Revelation, to those who overcome, chapter 2, four times, to each church of the four churches in Revelation 2. He tells us to overcome to each church in Revelation chapter 3, to the three other churches. So that's pretty self-explanatory that he says you have to endure to the end. It's only people that come in and 
and want to manipulate scripture like the devil. And some of them have just been taught by people that they believe. And so we have to be meek, patient, give them the scriptures and pray they have ears to hear and tell them that specifically is what Jesus said. If you have an ear to hear, hear what the spirit saith unto the churches seven times in Revelation. He just happened to say the same thing in Matthew 13. It's like, this is the one that you just got to say, you're, you're not, you don't have an ear then. Because Jesus says, if anyone have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. And he said that in Matthew 13, talking about the parables. The parable tells us that some hear and believe. But Matthew 13, 21, these have no root. So they believe, but they have no root. And as soon as persecution and tribulation comes for the word, which is Jesus Christ, meaning scripture, they become offended. They fall away. The next one here makes it a little further with joy. Oh, I believe, I believe. But guess what? Even the demons believe and tremble. You show me faith and I will show you works. We're saved by grace alone, through faith, not of works. However, what are we judged on? I'm giving you deep stuff right here that you should be able to get from the scriptures. We're judged on our works. I know your works. I know your deeds. And so that's what we're judged on. And that's what we're going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. So we're continuing to preach this, the gospel of Jesus. And unfortunately, a lot of people are um, arguing about, about this because a lot of false teachers have, have made them think that. And so it's, it's just not a good doctrine because people stay on drugs and they, and they, stay, you know, and they, they believe that they can be once saved, always saved. And, you know, Hebrews talks about a doctrine of repro reprobation, meaning you become past repentance. So let's read a few scriptures from Hebrews. Hebrews chapter two, we're doing kind of a summary here. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. For if the message spoken by angels was binding that every violation and disobedience received a just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for scripture. Always saying the same thing. Same thing in Revel uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14, talking about the spiritual gifts as he wills to distribute them, my friends. See, as the Holy Spirit wants to distribute them. So that tells you both. Now we go to Hebrews 4. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword, penetrating, dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before him whom we must give an account. Hebrews 6. It is impossible for those who have been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit. So you can't share in the Holy Spirit unless you're born again in the New Testament. Who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come. And before that, it said that, you know, the doctrine of baptisms, meaning there's, you know, there's a uh, baptism of joy where the Holy Spirit gives you joy, unspeakable joy. And there's a baptism of fire where you, where you mourn and weep. And it's the suffering. It's called the uh, Baptism of suffering, what well, Christ suffered, and the apostles suffered. It's a calling that some people get. Okay, so now if you've had all that, here's what it says. If they fall away, and I want to be clear here, you're not going to fall away through one sin. You're not going to fall away from backs. I mean, I, I'm not going to speak for God here, but I know for me, I backslid a few times since he put his spirit in me 20 years ago, and I was convicted over it. And so what this means is falling away to the point of reprobation. So I don't want people to think we're saying you can't, if you sin again, you're done. No, it's just warning you not to trample on the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what it's saying here is if you have turned reprobate, if you have fallen away, it's impossible to be brought back to repentance because to their loss, they are crucifying the son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. So see, when a, when, a, when a believer goes out there and curses and goes out there and has abortions and goes out there and, you know, thinks that, oh, I, I can watch porn because I heard a mega church saying that, um, 
I think it was Todd White who said, while you're watching porn, Jesus is with you and you can pray to him at any time. Instead, he should have been absolutely rebuking it, warning people that they can become reprobate, warning people that any porn at all is touching Satan's domain, child sex trafficking, drugs, and you can lose your, and you can, you can go to hell. And you can be one of those in Matthew 7 where Jesus is saying, depart from me, you that work iniquity. So they, you should never, ever give any room. What, what does it say? It says flee fornication. So my friends, the scriptures are very clear. You do not trample on the blood of Jesus Christ as if and, and put him to open shame. So that's what it is. It's a stumbling block. The rest of the world looks at us and they say, why aren't you being a Christian? So you know, when you're going out to the club and stuff like that. So that's what it's saying is you're putting God to open shame. You're putting what Jesus did on the cross to open shame. When you cuss, when you go to yoga, when you do these things, when you partner with false prophesying, when you drag down the mighty name of God, what is the gospel to go out and preach to repent or perish? The churches just build their big ministries and they don't send people out. Uh, California has 25,000 churches. It's just shocking that they don't realize that they're not impacting the community and you're supposed to be sent out. They, I'm not going to go too far into it. I don't want to say the same things over and over again, but I know the Lord has put a burden on my heart for the falling away church and all these things. Okay, so Hebrews 10, which we recently did, if we deliberately keep on sinning, after we have received the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. And how does Jesus come back? In 2 Thessalonians 1, he comes back in flaming fire with the holy angels to judge those who didn't believe in God or obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it, and it shows you hellfire. So this is the scriptures, how Jesus is coming back. Revelation, two, you know, Revelation is amazing. You were called to walk in white. If you have any insight in, and understanding of the second coming, you can see that there's, you know, we're called to walk in white. We're called to rebuke uh, false teaching. So let's go to Hebrews 12 and we'll go through that. And, uh, and then she'll read Revelation 1. Give me a second to make my screen bigger. Thank you so much. Lord Jesus, praise you. Give you glory. All glory to you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy name. Okay, that's big enough. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So what we just saw is Hebrews 11, so great a cloud of witnesses, by faith, by faith, over and over again, by faith, Rahab protected the, uh, the spies, Joshua and Caleb. By faith, Abraham sojourned, and he left his home, and he lived in a tent. By faith, he was willing to believe God that his seed was going to be like the stars in the sky and the sand in the sea. And when God told him to kill his firstborn Isaac, by faith, he knew that God could raise him from the dead to keep the promise to him. And by faith, it's accredited to him as righteousness. By faith, they shut the lion's mouths, talking about Daniel. By faith, they raised the dead. By faith, this world was not worthy of them. By faith, Moses suffered the sufferings of Christ rather than enjoy sin for a season with Pharaoh and the riches. And he took off. So by faith, all of that is by faith should quicken us that that is the cloud of witnesses mentioned right now. So that's quicken us. By faith, when we see out other street preachers out there, we're quickened. By faith, when, when somebody's got the Holy Ghost in them and they're preaching the fire of God, by faith, when we're laying hands on people and seeing if the Lord's going to deliver them or, or seeking to, to deliver the gospel in hard areas, by faith, that should quicken other people. By faith, we, we, we call, we, we rebuke the powers and principalities over our neighborhoods uh, with their drugs, with porn, with false teaching, with the sorcery shot. By faith, we say what it is. It's wicked and that Jesus rose again. And by faith, we, we declare things that we know are, even when we can't see the, the fruit of it right away. We just know that it's true because the Lord Jesus said it and the scripture says it. So we, we proclaim it. And we know the judgments and the more you walk uh, in the judgments of God, the more you understand the parables that he said his believers understand 
<laughs> and then you have that burden of the Lord if he gives that to you. Not everybody has the same uh, callings. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So what we just said is sin can easily trip us up. So what do we do to avoid sin? We take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. So a sinful thought tries to come in there. We take it captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. We judge each other. We're supposed to judge each other in the church. By doctrine, test the spirits and judge each other's fruit coming out of our mouth. Jesus said the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks where you put your heart at, heart at, there your treasure is. So we can see the fruit by what comes out of the mouth. That's how we test things, not by feelings, not by emotions. I mean, if we did, if we did that, we would think that Jeremiah the prophet was, was possessed because Jeremiah the prophet was out in front of the churches rebuking them. They said, Jeremiah, you're terror on every side. They, they tried to kill Jeremiah. So a lot of the baby Christians that have been brought up on a lot of false teachers out of these seminaries don't understand that what we judge is words. That's how Jesus taught us. We judge by the word of God. Hallelujah. Because there's a lot of phoniness out there and rebuking it makes you look crazy sometimes. Looking in, unto Jesus, the author and finisher. Another text says the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. So this is what we do. We look at it and say, look, this life is temporary. The Bible says this life is a vapor, but what we have is stored up treasure in heaven. We are a spiritual sacrifice. First Peter one, we are living stones. We're pouring out spiritual fragrances. The, it says in Peter that the angels long to look in to see who will get salvation. In Ephesians, it says the manifold wisdom of God is made evident to the powers and principalities through the church. And when I say through the church, that means the ecclesia, the called out ones, not the building. That's where we go edify, teach, do what we're doing now. But the gospel is go out, preach the word, preach to repent. And that's where the conviction comes. And that's where persecution comes. And so the church is lacking in persecution because they're trying to they're, they're turning Jesus into their own understanding that, he's, that he doesn't bring offense to anyone. But it says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. So how does that fit unless it's out there on the streets? Amen? That can't happen in church. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that are perishing. But to we who believe or we who are being saved, it's the power of God. And then it also says the preaching of the cross is to we who believe life to life, glory to glory, but to those who are perishing, death to death. So what that means is there's a hardening of the heart, there's a resistance, there's a hate against it, and the sin gets uh, more and more hardened in their heart. Great. Yes, amen. So we look to, the, we look to our, our inheritance in heaven. We're already seated in the heavenlies. We're, we're already uh, seated there. We, we just have to end there now. Now we just walk out our salvation with fear and trembling. Now we store up treasures and spiritual gifts, and we don't even see them all right now, like salvations that we're, we get to be a part of through prayer, through preaching, through handing out Bible tracts, through discipling. Um, there's a lot of gifts that have to do with um, just wanting to see Jesus return more than anything else. You get a crown of rejoicing. Rejoice! There's a crown for martyrdom, which obviously they deserve, right? They're the perfect uh, faithful bride who love not their own life under the death. They follow the lamb wherever the lamb goes. And they had the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. And they have their own testimony, testimony of what Jesus did for them. In Revelation 12, 11, they overcame the beast by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They love not their lives to the death. And so we see the souls of those who are persecuted. We see that they build up much treasure. Jesus says, blessed are you when men revile you and speak evil of you for his namesake. For so they did the same thing to the prophets and great is your reward in heaven. Rejoice, rejoice when you're persecuted and bless those who persecute you. Bless those who persecute you. And that's how 
that's 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 what's going to bring them uh, conviction, more conviction. If we yell back at them, what what good is that? It says in Peter. It says, so what if you suffer unholy suffering? You know, murderers suffer unholy suffering. Drunkards suffer unholy suffering. That was a waste of time. So he says, now that you're a born again, now you're going to suffer holy suffering. The people you used to party with are going to think you're crazy now. The world's going to think you're crazy now because we're a zealous, set apart people. And when they cuss us out, we tell them, you know, we pray that the Lord will soften their heart. And instead of cursing, we bless. And that's for, you know, the, um, the people that aren't born again for the church. You've got to rebuke them and tell them, hey, if you're cussing, you're either not born again or you're heading toward reprobation because out of the mouth, you know, no corrupt communication should ever come out of your mouth. Only that which is up uh, to edifying and building up. Okay, praise be your holy name. Daniel 12 is one of my favorites because it's Old Testament telling you about the resurrection of the dead. It says some will rise to everlasting shame and contempt, but others will rise and shine like the stars who lead many to righteousness. The, uh, the wise win souls. That's what it's saying in Proverbs. That's what it says in Daniel 12. So how does that happen from preaching, from enduring, from being persecuted, that people will turn? And uh, the greatest moves ever are from martyrdom. They just are. That's how we have the gospel. That's, how, how, that's why it's 2022 right now. It's because yeah. all the disciples were martyred and you couldn't stamp it out. The more you tried to kill it, the more people saw this is faith that, that's, that's different than the rest of this world. It's supernatural. Besides the healings and miracles that happen you know, during persecution, that's when you see it. I didn't, I didn't see devils cast out of people until I started rebuking things, until the Lord purified my heart, showed me that things were wicked, showed me that people were preaching for Satan. When they said Jesus isn't enough, take, take drugs, I said, that's satanic preaching right there. I started rebuking it because Jesus is enough. Don't ever say he's not enough because then you're fitting into the scriptures that say you, um, you have a form of godliness, but deny the power therein. From such, don't, don't partner with it, says straight up. Rebuke it with all authority. Ephesians 5.11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, rather expose or reprove it. So here we go for Hebrews. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So this is how we deal with when we get weary, when we don't see fruit, when we're just getting persecuted, when your calling doesn't seem like it's like fitting in with the rest of the church because some people's calling is not going to fit in with the apostate church right now. It's just not gonna, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm going to read to you Jeremiah 7, 15, 19. Jeremiah was being used as God's prophet and he was speaking forth the judgments and he would speak them forth and they didn't come to pass for years and years and years. And they started calling Jeremiah terror on every side. They tried to kill Jeremiah. And then Babylon invasion started to come. His prophecy started to happen. But during that period, Jeremiah wanted to stop being a prophet. And God said to him, if you will repent of this mistaken attitude of self, self pity and despair and know my goodness, know that I am good. So that's the first thing we got to do is know that God is good for whatever we're going through. And then he says, if you will preach words that are pure from God, what we have now in the New Testament is scripture right there. Jeremiah was saying he was telling Jeremiah only preach pure words, my words and separate them from what they say, which is vile and do not bend to them, make them bend to you. And what happened? Jeremiah was martyred. So it was a future glory. Now, the same thing. With, with Jesus, that's what we look to is we say, I cannot whine. I can't complain because I'm, you know, a rich kid. Pretty much. We need to really look at what we are in the United States. We are not walking without shoes in Nigeria. We are not being persecuted in China. We are, we, we are living in the land of plenty. We're Laodicea. And so we need to realize that we need to be out there in the streets preaching, doing the will of God and feeling the Holy Spirit in us. And then you sleep better at, at, at the end of the day and you stop whining about things you shouldn't be whining about. But if you are whining about things, you need to look to this verse right here and say, look at what Jesus endured. Look at what the prophets endured to even speak of Jesus. The prophets long to look to see what you see right now is what Jesus said. And these are prophets that were martyred. Uh, Isaiah taken up to the Holy of Holies. He was martyred. Um, Jeremiah was martyred. So we got to look at it and say, wow, I'm going through nothing compared to them. These people fasted 40 days, my friends. Moses, 40 days. Elijah, 40 days. Jesus, 40 days. Me? No, not so much. So what we need to do when we feel like we're grumbling is we need to look at this and say, 
I'm not enduring anything compared to them. And, and, and it puts me in the right mindset. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Be thankful in all circumstances as it is the will of God. And that's how we stop going into discouragement or over, what is it, over grieving. Now, I, I can't, I don't want to make people feel bad if they're in a lot of grief because maybe your situation's way, way different and your calling's way different, but we, we don't want to over grieve. We don't want to over th think things. That's why all the Bible studies are important because it puts our, our mind on Christ. It puts our mind on eternal things. And now this is very important right here because after all this stuff in Hebrews, it says you have not resisted to bloodshed striving against sin. So Jesus went to the cross, perfect, never sinned, so that we could have redemption, so we could have uh, forgiveness of sins, so he can wash us and cleanse us of our sins, so he can sprinkle us, so he can breathe on us, give us the Holy Ghost and fill us up, call us into our giftings. He's our high priest. He's our intercessor, it says in Hebrews. So we cry out to the name of Jesus. And it says resist, you know, resist sin. Don't play with sin. Don't play with sin, my friends. You don't play with it at all. Praise be your holy name, mighty are you, sovereign Lord. Now we continue. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Revelation chapter 3 to the Laodicean church. I wish you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich and have need of nothing but plenty of goods, but don't realize you're poor, blind, naked, wretched, and miserable. I counsel thee to buy from me, Jesus Christ, gold tried in the fire that you may be clothed in white, that the shame of your nakedness be not exposed. So earlier we saw that you're exposing Jesus to, to yeah. as if he's not enough to get through sin if you're claiming his name and cussing and like Lecrae going to bars smoking a cigar and, and fighting with a street preacher. You're dragging down the name of God. I mean, he was, he was at a, a Wu-Tang. Lecrae was at a Wu-Tang with a with a adulterous shirt on him. And it's just wicked. It says what, you know, friendship with the world is enmity with God. They don't know. They're not preaching the real Jesus anymore. And we pray for him and pray that that uh, street preacher got to him and convicted him that he, that, that he will repent. Because after that in Revelation 3, it says, I chasten those I love. Therefore, be zealous. The word zealous means on fire, hot. Be zealous and repent. I chasten those I love. And so what this is saying right here is we have to be chastened. If we're not, if you're not receiving chastening for your sin, you know, 2 Corinthians 13 says, test if ye be in the faith, examine yourselves that Christ is really in you. Is he in you? Because if he is, you know, it bears witness. There's, there's the Holy Spirit bears witness that he is in you. And if you're smoking weed without any uh, conviction, if you're a drunkard without any conviction, if you're cursing, if you're having violent rages without any conviction, you know, test if you be in the faith because uh, do not be deceived. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So this is serious hellfire stuff. This is serious stuff. That's part of discipling is letting people know, you know, true doctrine and, and fulfill your calling and uh, all these things what the scripture teaches. Now, here's what chastening does. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, meaning all the family of Christ is a partaker of being chastened, then you are illegitimate and not sons, meaning you're not, you're not of God. What does that mean? It means you're of your father, the devil. It's clearly, clearly what it says. Okay, so Hebrews has just as much to do with Gentiles as it does Jews. And some of these people will say it's not for all of us, and they're wrong. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed, for a few days, chastened us as seemed best to them. They were doing the best they could as our fathers. But he, for our prophet, that we may be partakers of his holiness. No chastening. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Wow, that's so beautiful, my friends. So beautiful. 
This is my prayer for all of my family and Amber's family and Kimberly's family and all the people we minister with is that all our families will be saved, have the spirit of God pour out into them, give them conviction over their sins, that they have their own testimony, that they have the spirit of God bearing witness out of them, that they, that they have heard from the Lord, that they have seen that their sins are against a holy God and that they're changed from that time forward. And that's called um, the, the time of rejoicing. It's also called the times of refreshing. And so that's your first, be for me, born again experience. Now, after that, as I backslid a couple times, uh, I knew when the chastening was coming. You know what I mean? I just knew, okay, I was not supposed to work at that restaurant. God specifically told me don't work there. He didn't want me to be a bartender there. And when he started taking everything from me, I knew it was him. And so I let go of everything and I got on my face and it was great. I mean, it's great to lose everything when you, when you know you're a child of God, because you know that something's coming and he put, put his spirit in me for, for a different um, anointing from that point forward. Praise be your holy name. So, so at the time, it doesn't seem joyful until you realize, oh, this is the Lord God taking everything, everything I'm touching. Everything must go is what, what, what can happen when, you need, when you're already born again, but you're falling away. Praise be your holy name. So that's how, that's how it is. But it yields, it yields peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So we're trained. We're being trained. We're, we're soldiers of the Lord in training all the way up until yeah. revelation. revelation. We're in training right now. That's, isn't that awesome? Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang, hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather healed praise you lord praise you lord mm -hmm. pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the lord looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of god do you hear those words right there there's a responsibility for us that's what it's saying to not fall short of the grace of God. Lest, here's an important one right here too. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. So our heart, oh, it must be pure. The pure heart shall see God. Sanctify my heart. Renew in my heart a right spirit, Lord God. If there's any unforgiveness, if there's any covetousness that, that I can't see, this is what we do is we say, Lord God, purge it. Purge it, Lord God, because the pure, pure at heart shall see God. This is right here that we must have a pure heart. We can't have unforgiveness toward anyone. No one. That, that defiles many people. Uh, Revelation chapter 2 to the church of Ephesus, doing everything right doctrinally. I know your works that you've labored. You've not denied my name. You've kept the patience. You can't bear those who are evil. You've tested those who claim they're apostles and found them to be liars. But this I have against you. You forgot your first love. Repent and do the first works or else I'll move the candlestick. But this I have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. So you can have doctrine right and still have an unforgiving heart, a heart that gets a bitter root. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Okay, now here's, this, here's the serious warning about fornication. Lest there be any fornicator. Now look, look what's fornicators listed next to. Or profane. Fornication is profane. It just leads to profane things. It leads to cursing. It leads to porn. It leads to cheating. It leads to drug trafficking. All these wicked things. It's just straight up demonic. You cannot do this, my friends. A lot of people don't even realize, you know, how serious this is that are baby Christians. And that's why they take pills and are on and, and are um, depressed and taking pills for their depression, etc. They're not fulfilling their calling. They're not preaching the word. They're not baptized in the Holy Spirit of fire. They're not laying hands on the sick. Who would want anybody to lay hands on you if they've been fornicating? I mean, I don't. Don't even touch me. You need to, you're not supposed to eat or drink. You're not supposed to commune with a brother that's in sin. You, you need to rebuke that so that he can sit again with you. First Corinthians chapter 5. Okay, so what this points to right here is you could end up like Esau, who for one morsel sold morsel of food sold his birthright. This is a picture of repentance through much tears that he was not granted. This is the warning here, my friends, for you that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Whew. We got to have a fear of the Lord when we read scriptures like this. 
Mm-hmm. Fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, like we I think it was Hebrews 10 at the end of it. And I want you to hear fall. Fall is what Satan did. He fell. He wanted to be like the most high. He wanted to lead the congregation from the north. Iniquity was found in his heart. He was the worship leader. He was the anointed cherub that covereth. Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Okay, so it's a falling. It, it doesn't happen like that. It's your thoughts are, are getting corrupted. Your heart's getting corrupted. Read Romans 1. Your flesh is now given over to all these things. And then there's reprobation of the mind. It's a falling that takes place, my friends. That's why we're supposed to, you know, judge each other, chasten each other, you know, judge each, preach the word. And if the conviction doesn't come upon the person, are they born again? That's that. That's the thing is what you, you need to say. Test if you be in the faith, if you see somebody continuing in willful sin or being unteachable. If they're unteachable, it's a sad thing that, you know, that they won't let the spirit of God teach them through the scriptures. Mm-hmm. For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burned with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of the trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the words should not be spoken to them anymore, for they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned and shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. And Moses was a soldier, my friends, if you understand the kind of stuff Moses had to go through, a straight soldier. But you have come and also called the most meek man. So, I mean, meekness is not weakness. Let's just be clear with that. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, praise the Lord, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. Wow, isn't that just amazing, the words that they use? To God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks of better things than that of Abel. So the the righteous blood of Abel cried out, leaving a testimony against the land. Praise be your holy name. This is how we understand, you know, the land's given over to certain things like that. See that you do not refuse him who speaks our Lord God for, and who's he speak? How's he speak? He speaks through his own spirit to you and to me, but he also speaks through us to each other by the scriptures. If we have ears to hear, For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away. See how you got see how it's a turn away from? You turn away. It says in 1 Timothy 4, some will depart from the faith. So that means that the faith of God is is right here, the scripture, but then they turn from it and they give heed to seducing spirits, becoming doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared as with a hot iron. That's why the gospel is turn to the Lord Jesus, turn from your sins. So we don't want to turn away from him once, once, we're, once we're in his hands. We don't want to turn and walk out of his hand. Mm-mm. So much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now has promised saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. So this speaks of the judgments that are coming in Revelation straight up. If you have eyes to see and understand the judgments, that's what it's saying. There's a massive shaking coming like no other. There's a greater falling away coming than any other falling away in scripture that if those days were not cut short, all men would perish, said the Lord Jesus Christ. Read Matthew 7. It fits with this when it's talking about if you've built your uh, uh, built your built off the uh, rock of Jesus Christ, you can withstand. That's what it's showing you in Matthew 7. But it's saying, great is the shaking that's coming. If you've built your house on sand, it's going to fall. And what a great fall, it says in Matthew 7. And it fits with this judgment right here. And Amber's about to read uh, Revelation 1 in a second. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken. As of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. What can't be shaken? Our faith in Jesus Christ. What can't be shaken? Our preaching. What can't be shaking? Praying for a family, praying for everyone. Mention everyone. Pray for the falling away church. Pray for your elected officials. Pray. And that can't be taken away. These are spiritual sacrifices that cannot be taken away. That's why Jesus said, store up your treasure in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt. Yes. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, praise the Lord, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly 
fear for our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. Sorry, I took so long. Now it's Amber's turn and we'll close it out for the day. Revelation 1. Revelation she cried unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Mm. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, and beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Thank you. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were like were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and when i saw him i fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches praise you lord praise you lord god yeah. thank you jesus you guys pray for amber that this infirmity just gets completely off her all the way off her P pray for all of our families yeah. renee thank the you. prayer warrior susan kimberly her whole family that were protected through this psalm 91 that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and that um, we'll be strong in the Lord because he's got plans for us. He's going to answer a lot of prayers we've been praying for. Hallelujah. He's already been answering them. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. He is mighty yes. and safe. I'll see you next time, Amber. All right. God bless you, brother. Bye. Bye.